Hey, what's up? This is Jason Drone. Welcome to today's presentation. So this is a re-record of episode 57. So 57, uh, we <laughs> ended up, episode 57, GSD Daily. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Jason Drone. I'm creator of doneforyou.com. And uh, we specialize in three things. We specialize in creating offers. Um, we specialize in building sales systems that convert. And then we also specialize in setting up marketing automation uh, so that your business runs without you. And what we were talking about. Um, so I got on a roll and then like audio cut out and then that's it. So uh, it is what it is, right? So audio is good. I'm watching my audio level indicator there. Um, you know, so everything seems to be working okay. Um, so what we're talking about today is should you sell ebooks or print on demand? So in previous sessions, we have talked about how to, how to set up um, sales funnels to sell your ebooks, um, sell your ebooks, your, you know, digital work, whether it's an ebook, whether it's a paperback, whether it's a whatever. So we've talked a lot about sales funnels. We've also talked about formatting um, Kindle books um, and the benefits of selling digitally versus selling print. So um, today, what we're going to do, and, and it's an ex it's this is a, an extension of the same conversation, which is: should you sell eBooks on your website? Should you sell print on demand? Uh, you know, paperback. Um, so, what are some of the caveats of both? And that's what we're going to discuss. So. Um, first of all, in, we talked about traditional publishing. We talked about self-publishing a little bit. So self-publishing, you can keep more money. At the end of the day, you can keep more money. You can you can take dollars, you know, out of um, you know take dollars out from from doing what you're doing. Self-publishing is basically you know print on demand. You know, for for lack of a better term, meaning as the book or the product gets ordered, uh, then it actually gets created, packaged and shipped. And it happens like lightning fast, you know, so Amazon created, a, or they bought a company called create space, create space was basically this innovative platform that you could upload your, your doc file, your PDF, whatever it, they'd format it as a book, they'd send you a proof, and then they would mass distribute it. So they would send it to Barnes and Noble, they'd send it to Amazon, they send it to all the places that, you know, you wanted to sell your, your, paperback. And then Amazon had their Kindle digital publishing, which is the way that they, and then, then they ended up merging them together. So now they're actually the same platform. KDP.amazon.com is where you do both. It's where you sell your Kindle books, your eBooks. It's also where you sell your physical paperbacks for sale on Amazon. And then it also, they have a distribution to some other providers too. Now, today we're going to talk about digital products and eBooks versus print on demand. Um, you know, versus that print on demand model. Now, I really wanted to bring these two things together um, so that you could understand how they how they work on a macro basis. Um, so partly because right now in the pandemic that we are in, books are not essential. Um, so for the longest, for, for like a month, a good month, after the pandemic broke out in the United States, like I read, I read books all the time, physical books. I like physical books more than digital books. So I order a lot of physical books. And, um, what happened was I would order these physical books and I would have a ship, you know, it'd take three weeks for them to ship them to me. And I know the warehouse is literally a couple hours away, you know? So, um, there was a problem. So, so what happened was, is I ended up having to buy a couple Kindle books because there was books that I wanted to get through because they were highly relevant to, to something that I was doing right now. And I wanted to get through them, educate myself on something, uh, and then implement it and turn it around really quickly. And I couldn't do that. So I ended up having to buy the Kindle book and the audio book. You know, I, I listen to audio books all the time too, but I had to buy the Kindle book which is fine, but I, I, I can't highlight a Kindle book quite the way that I would a physical book. Like the way I read physical books, um, I don't have any books in here. Uh, that, that, so the way I read books, I highlight them, then I go back through and take, take some notes. I'm kind of a diligent reader now, uh, not when I was in school. But so what happens is, is so many 
so many people, um, so many internet marketers, so many people who are selling, you know, digital courses and books and everything online, what they're doing is they're putting together a free plus shipping offer or a digital offer. So um, the digital offer is such that, or the free plus shipping offer, you basically have a tripwire. So the tripwire is a, a low end offer, $4.95 or a dollar or $2 or, or free plus shipping. So it might be free physical book and then it's $4.95 to pay for the shipping or $6 to pay for the shipping. So it's a free thing. It's a low end offer. And then they march you up to uh, like usually a $37 upsell. Maybe it's, it might be 97, it might be 67, but they march you up to an upsell. If you don't take that, they send you to a downsell and the downsell is 17, 27, 37. Then they march you to another upsell. And that that second upsell is usually quite a bit more expensive. Usually it's a couple hundred bucks or whatever. So because of this upsell path, you generate more money over the course of a buy, over, over the course of uh, life with this prospect. Now, when you sell on your own, when you have your own eBooks, when you have your own physical products, your own books, and you're shipping your own books, you're fulfilling them in your own process, or you're taking the money for the books yourself. First of all, you're not paying some marketplace like Amazon 30% or 60% to hold, you know, for, for their, their service in there. Um, so you're keeping hundred percent of the money. You're also paying for the book, you know? So, but the, but the point is you get to, you get to 100% control the upsell path. So you can go from, you know, a, a tripwire offer all the way up to the upsells all the way through the matrix maximizing your order value. So you might take a $4.95 buyer and turn them into a $100 buyer, you know, just by going through the right upsell sequence. And that is really what maximizing sales funnel conversion is all about. Now, a publishing house, they're not controlling pricing. They're not controlling the product. They're not controlling deliverability, you know, so when you're working with them, at least, you know, so in this aspect, you are controlling all aspects of the pricing and deliverability, which gives you maximum control over the buying process. Now, the good parts about ebooks and digital products is you have instant delivery. So you can, your, your offers are instantly deliverable. You have a higher price point, you know, so you can charge as much as you want for this stuff. Um, there are no deliverability issues. So at the end of the day, you know, you, you just give somebody a download link and that's all, you know, they, they open it, they read it, whatever. You don't have to worry about the mailbox or, or anything like that. There's no fulfilling fulfillment. There's no printing. There's no warehousing, which is huge. You know, that's what Amazon's 30 or 60%. That's what, that's what they, they get you for because they're printing it, warehousing it, fulfilling it, the whole, the whole deal, you know, and that's what you're paying the money for. Sure, you have to take that on, but if it's digital, you don't. You just you 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 set up the the matrix, you know, and then you just go from there. And you also get higher margins when it's digital too. Now, the bad part of eBooks and digital products is possibly there's a little less credibility. So you might not necessarily get the maximum amount of credibility for an eBook because everybody can write an eBook and everybody can throw it up online. Whereas if you have a physical book, you know, you have credibility that is associated with that physical book you know so that's a big thing you know what i mean like that's a that's a a, a big benefit of having a physical book is having the credibility the credibility is transferred because you have this physical book this this manifestation of your work that you're able to sell to them now if you don't have a physical book you know, if you just have a digital book, then you, you can't hand it to somebody. You can't say, here you go. Here's a book. You know, um, it's like, I'll send you a link. And then it's no different than a web page for all intents and purposes. So there might be a little less credibility when you have a, just a purely ebook. You also might have a higher refund rate. Uh, so, you know, people might not necessarily appreciate the, the ebook as much as the physical book, they might not even read it because they don't actually have something physical to crack open and read. So they might consider it, they might send a refund. Um, some people don't and won't understand. And this is less of an issue now than, than it was a while ago, but sometimes people still don't understand eBooks. They don't understand how they read them. And some buyers don't value them as much, even though they pay more, you know, for the eBook itself. 
Now, some print-on-demand stuff. So having a physical book that Amazon prints for you or somebody prints for you, um, you know, and, and you print as the orders come in. So first of all, you only print what you need, which is fantastic. So order comes in, then it is printed, and then it is shipped. You have lower refund rates because it's a physical item. So they receive it in the mail. You also have higher customer satisfaction normally. When somebody is receiving something in the mail, you usually get better conversions, and then people usually like it better um, because it's a physical, tangible item that they have access to. And then there's also higher perceived value because it's a physical book and it's more traditional. So a lot of the credibility that you know is bestowed on authors is now bestowed on you. Now the bad start, the bad side of print on demand higher costs. I mean, you have to pay for the book to be printed. I actually have a eight and a half by 11 textbook that is being printed now. Um, I'm waiting for the proof copy. I should be getting it in the mail. That eight and a half by 11 text copy is $22 to print. That's just the cost of it. It's full color. I mean, it's beautiful. I'm hoping it's beautiful, uh, but it's $22 to print. It's a textbook. It's 274 pages long. So obviously the the pricing, the product of the, the, the pricing of that textbook is 99 bucks on Amazon. Um, so higher costs. And even then, I think I only make like 10 bucks per sale because it's cost of printing and then the Amazon shipment fulfillment, all that other stuff. Uh, and then at the end of the day, I get my 10 bucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? um, bad thing about another bad thing about print on demand, people don't get the item immediately like they do digital and people, you can't update the product. So it's, you know, like with an ebook, if something changes, you can literally log in, make the change, you know, add it to the PDF, uh, and then that's it. Whereas you can't do that with a physical book. You can't change something that is already sitting in somebody's library. They understand that, but that also means that, you know, once they have that thing, the relationship is stopped unless they opt in or do something else, you know, with you. Um, but you can actually do both. And that's the, the beauty of it. You can do a physical and digital products. If somebody doesn't buy your physical product, you can downsell the digital product. So you can offer them the free plus shipping offer or a free, or, or, you can offer them a book for $19.95. And if they don't buy, you can exit pop them into a $4.95 digital offer. You know, if somebody doesn't take the digital product, you can downsell the physical product. So there's lots of ways that you can move back and forth between physical books, print on demand, and also digital products. And you just need to remember, you know, the, the, the two mediums are actually two products. At the end of the day, two things, the two mediums, it's two different products, it's two different offers. You're going to have two different sets of sales copy. They're going to be the same. They might even be on the same sales page, but you might have two different buttons or you might exit pop into the digital only offer for $4.95. One of the beauties, like we've been testing a lot of different products and offers. Um, right now, the thing that is working better than anything else is a $4.95 digital ebook. You know, so it's five bucks. Um, it in in the in the the world of tripwire offers, it is sitting in the same place as a free plus shipping offer did before the pandemic, because access to availability, access to to actual physical books and shipping physical books because they are non essential is slow and expensive. So people are opting for buying digital books, and now I don't think the industry is ever going back to physical because. I mean, even the cost of print of, of a $3 paperback and the $3 in shipping, you know, it's still just a pain in the ass compared to just sending up an ebook. And now, you know, now we have grown accustomed to reading ebooks and to valuing ebooks at least $5 worth. You know what I mean? So um, that's one of the, the beauties of what has happened lately or what is in this digital transformation. It's one of the nice things about how, how this is all working out. So you're going to see a lot more of that in the future. Um, the digital books and moving away from the physical textbooks. Um, so with that, um, if you have any questions at all, go to doneforyou.com forward slash start, fill out the application. I am happy to, you know, we'll jump on an action plan call and we'll talk about your sales funnel and your traffic and everything else. And, um, that's it. So any questions at all, let me know. Go to doneforyou.com. Check it out. And I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks.